the Gadsden City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Tolls is absent today. Councilman Williams? Here. Worthy? Here. Eccles? Here. Billingsley? Here. Cannon? Here. Councilman Reed is also absent today. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask President Williams to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to convene. Lord God, we thank you for all that are in attendance today. Father, we thank you for the great responsibility that's placed on this governing body, Father, and we also thank you for the, the great opportunity that it, that's extended to all of the citizens in this great city. And Father, we ask that you would continue to touch us and bless us, Father. We live in very trying and difficult times, Father. We ask that you would issue a special measure of grace for this city, Father God, that we will endure and be a light in darkness, Father God, for us in Jesus' name that we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It was good to hear those young voices out there. <laughs> Amen. Very good. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and city council meeting held on July 14th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of July 10th through the 16th. So moved. Check. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations, Mayor. You have any? Okay. No proclamations. Uh, number eight is unfinished business. Uh, the nuisances located at 1405 Stroud Avenue in District 2 have been abated by the owner, therefore no action by the council is needed. This is the time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution ordering abatement of nuisances on property located at 712 Knuckle Street in District 2. Christy Butler Reed, Alabama Housing Finance Authority and Family Savings Credit Union being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Okay. Does anyone wish to speak in favor? You, you can come on up, ma'am. Hey, Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison with the Building Department. This case invo involves a burned house. We started our process in September of last year. There have been no improvements to the property. There are no permits to improve. We're asking for a resolution today to abate the nuisance. Thank you. Okay. Ma'am, if you would, just state your name and address, please. I'm Nancy Mullinax. I live at 711 Knuckle Street, across the street from this house. This house burned about a year ago, a uh, year ago this month, I think. It's awful. There's stuff all over the front porch. The, the house is boarded up. The grass needs cutting. And then you go around the back and it's even worse because there's this huge hole in the house. There's dead limbs and dead trees laying all over the backyard. Okay. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Does anyone else wish to speak in favor? What is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries to adopt. For items 10 through 13, these are our final public hearings or resolutions assessing nuisance abatement liens against property. This is for demolition that's already been performed, and we have four locations. I'm going to read the addresses and names, and anyone who wishes to speak about these may come forward. It's 805 Miller Avenue in District 1, 
the uh, the amount is three thousand six hundred thirty three dollars and sixty eight cents and Gloria Sterling Little is the last known owner. Uh, 1403 Park Avenue, which is also in District 1, $4,464.92. State of Alabama, heirs of Ludi Chambers and heirs of Dorothy Cassidy, an American First Federal Credit Union. 212 East Lake Drive, which is in District 2, uh, $1,806.40. Randall Graham, Diane Graham, and Wachovia Bank. 127 Victory Street, District 2, $4,340.40. Eloise Cofield, Elijah Thornton III, Eugenia Latham, Carrie Thornton, and Kevin Thornton. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to any of these resolutions? Please state your name and address, sir. Okay, my name is Elijah Thornton III. Um, being the oldest of the four siblings that are listed here, um, and considering what has transpired, I totally disagree um, with how things were handled. Again, for my second time speaking to you all, I totally disagree with how things were handled. Okay? Bad communication. Also, this price is ridiculous. Now, I have a brother that's here right now that actually started the demolition on the house. And when we started the demolition on the house, we were told to stop. We were told to stop. So, I believe there's some conflict of interest right here and some communication that needs to be heard because if we was doing our own demolition why are you why are you charging me for something that we started on? you gotta be paying me too huh that's all I had to say okay thank you mr. Thorne is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition to any of these Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt all four resolutions. So moved. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt all four resolutions, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries <coughs> to adopt. Item number 14 is a resolution authorizing warranty deeds for rights of way for the Tuscaloosa Avenue Bridge replacement project. The city owns the four par parcels located along Tuscaloosa Avenue, and ALDOT requires the city to e execute deeds to dedicate rights of way. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Item number 15 is a resolution authorizing agreement between the city of Gadsden and Aldine. This is for replacement of the dual bridges on US 431 over Black Creek, including maintenance and inspection of the proposed pedestrian bridge at the same location. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So move. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. <laughs> Item number 16 is a resolution authorizing agreement with ALDOT. This is for traffic signal maintenance at dual bridges on US 431 over Black Creek. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So move. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 
I think some, Cynthia's got somebody voting for her out there since she's not here. <laughs> they raised their hand. Item number 17 is a resolution establishing use of city-owned property for community gardens. This uh, approves guidelines to ensure that gardens under the program are supported by the neighborhood and care for property. The location of each community garden must be approved by the mayor. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Okay, new business. Is there any new business? Yes, Mr. President, I have a couple of new business items. Uh, ask for unanimous consent to consider a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a grant from Etowah County Community Development Committee in the amount of $10,000. And the second one is to uh, amend the fiscal year for 2015 budget to reflect the funding from Etowah County Community Development Committee. $10,000. So moved. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yes, this is a, uh, we're getting $10,000 uh, to uh, fix the uh, city parks at, uh, is that the one? South Park. Yeah. South Park Complex. Do some work there. And then the other one, the second resolution is to to reflect, reflect it in the budget for 2015. Okay. All right. So we have a motion to consider um, both of these items today and a second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution and the ordinance today as items of new business, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed, we have consent to be considered. So. I move for adoption. Second. Okay. Any additional discussion? Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution and the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt both items. Is there any more new business? Yes, sir, Mr. President. I have um, asked for unanimous consent to consider a resolution appointing members of the Gaston Airport Authority. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today under new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. I move to adopt. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, this is a resolution <clears throat> authorizing Jackie Raglan is a new appointee for the Gasson Airport Authority to, per, to replace Jarvis Rawls whose term expired in July 31st, 2011. Jackie Wagner's term will expire July 31st, 2017. Chad Hare is appointed to re replace Mike Ray, whose term expires July 31st, 2015. Chad Hare's term will expire July 31st, 2021. David Cochran is appointed to replace Mike McCartney, whose term expires July 31st, 2013. David Cochran's term will expire July 31st, 2019. The following individuals are reappointed to serve on the Gaston Airport Authority. Fred Singleton, Jr. for a term expiring on July 31st, 2021. William Cunningham for a term expiring on July 31st, 2019. And J. Harry McClendon for a term expiring on July 31st, 2021. Okay. Mayor, what's the J stand for? Mayor. Mayor, what's 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 the J stand for? Do you know? J. Yeah, and J. Harry. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I was reading all that. All right. And just for information purposes, these this is one of three pay boards that we have. Most of our boards are, are occupied by people who volunteer their time in efforts, but uh, this is one of three paid boards. Uh, the Airport Authority is one, the Board of Education is, a, is another, and the Waterworks uh, and Sewer Board is also a paid appointment. Okay. All right, Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. I move for adoption. 
Oh, okay. Right. Is there any more new business? Okay, department reports, committees, boards. Citizens request, Mr. Cole here, Joseph Cole. Call if you would state your name and address, and uh, you have uh, five minutes. Just five? Okay, thank you. <laughs> My name is Joseph Cole, and I'm a resident of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here today, uh, President Williams and members of the council, and to Mr. Mayor and all the citizens. I'm here today to address two issues, and I'm not here on a doom and gloom, so everybody can feel comfortable. <laughs> uh, I'm here, in essence, to the city hiring. I attended a civil service board meeting on yesterday, and for you all know I have been here on several occasions, and I came here last year because I had received word that the city of Gaston, the police department, and the fire department were discriminating against blacks in the hiring practices. So I had filed the initial suit some years ago in these matters, so I had prepared to come back to file suit against the city if these accusations were correct. But when I got here, I spoke to Mayor Guyton, and he directed me to his personnel department, which was very cooperative and gave me all of the information that I needed in respect to the recruitment and what was going on in the process of trying to hire blacks on the police and fire department in this city. And what I learned through my attempts, my recruitment and all, that the city was not in any fashion discriminating against any blacks or anyone else in the hiring process. The problem were we just didn't have the applicants. And those who did apply was not passing the exam. So what I did was to continue to try to recruit and continue to prepare individuals. And yesterday at the hiring by the Civil Service Board, there was some hiring of firefighters and one of those firefighters was an African-American, which I'm happy to say this morning. Also, I spoke to Captain Bobby Jackson, who has been strongly trying to increase the diversity on the police department, along with the chief here. So I feel very comfortable that the city is doing all that it can to get diversity in the departments and also in the city of of Gaston. I know the mayor has caught some flack because when you come in City Hall, most of the faces you see are white. But I know he's been trying to increase the number of blacks, and you can't fire people that's been working for years. So when vacancies occur, what you do is try to find the best applicant, and hopefully things will work out. So I'm here to, you know, offer my assistance. I protest, and I know how to fight. But I fight when I have to fight, and when there's no need to fight, I'm joining the ranks. So I just want to thank the city and your efforts, Chief Crane, and the fire chief especially, Mr. Mayor, your personnel department, which I know have become tired of me because I call them, I show up. I was showing up so much, I think Jerry Glad went out the back door one day <laughs> I came in his office. But I do appreciate the assistance. I appreciate the mayor's assessment, because he can tell you, I bug you, I've even called him at his home. But I haven't been asking for things for myself. I've just been trying to help and deal with the city. On the other matter of the constituent services, I, I'm particularly concerned with the community development department. We have seniors in this city, and seniors are your most loyal voters. And we have seniors who are not aware of the benefits that they can receive through the community development. Uh, Councilman Word and also Councilman Billingsley, I have assisted some of your constituents. Uh, one, an elderly man who luckily got his, a new roof on his house, got some repairs to his house, and also a lady who getting some repairs <coughs> to her house, and her house is now being painted. They provided the paint, and then they found the group to come out to volunteer and paint, and that's going on today as we speak. But my thing is, as I was telling Ms. Henson, and I spoke to President Williams about this, that we need to get a, I don't know what kind of method, but a better method of getting the word out. Because most seniors don't go on the internet. Some of them, when you have your community meetings, they do not attend. But we need to get the word out to them. I spoke to a lady last night who told me that her mother, who's in her 80s, and she's also in your district, Councilman Word, and she's here, may want to speak to you. 
her roof is falling in, the kitchen floors, but there are funds available. And I told them this, so we just need to know, I don't know if public service announcement, I know it's broadcast on TV, but something needs to be done so the elderly know that there is funds available for them to get assistance. So I'm just coming here to try to help bring that out and to render any assistance that I can. I thank you, uh, Council President Williams, for your attention on this. And I thank all of you. So, you know, we can disagree, but we don't have to be disagreeable because we're all trying to work for the same thing. So I thank you for this time. Hopefully I didn't go over. Just there, right? <laughs> so well, I said, God bless this country, God bless this city, and God bless you as you perform your duties and responsibilities. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. I will, um, I, I will say as it relates to that topic that we, um, you know, that the mayor is aware of, um, of some of the opportunities we might have as it relates to communication and uh, some discussion has been had relative to using our church community to help um, reach out to our elderly population because, uh, you know, that's generally somewhere where I, if our elderly people can't make it to a lot of other places and if they can't, um, access the internet or don't watch television, you know, they're going to be faithful relative to their local church service. So that's, that's something that we're going to try to use and maybe take a page out of the Chief's book. I know he, he went on a church tour uh, not too long ago, uh, reaching out, trying to uh, actively source for, for candidates. So that may be something that we'll do going forward. But again, that, that is a topic that's, uh, that's, that's on the radar for us. Uh, yes, I was accused of preaching, but that's good. <laughs> uh, we, we do, and we've had uh, some churches volunteer. Uh, there's one church on uh, West Megan over there, the railroad tracks going towards Atala. Uh, I think it's Daystar. I think they've painted about uh, five or six houses in the last couple of years, and uh, we, we do talk about that a lot. Uh, anybody who's 60 years old, uh, emergency repairs we have if there's no kids living in the house under six years old because of lead-based paint uh, then we can furnish the paint the brushes uh, and our inspectors commander king on one side of town and uh, mitchell troop on another who do uh, nuisance and abatement and stuff uh, several times they have told me of people uh, they told them to call us and we got in touch with them we put on roofs we put on heating and cooling uh, if it's something big like that, uh, I think up to, I might be right, $5,000. And for every year you live there, we take away 1000 At the end of five years, you owe nothing. And some people are a little bit afraid we're going to like foreclose. You know, they have to get them to understand. But it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's government money. It's a HUD thing. And, and we try to work that on all angles all, all the time. Sure do. Yeah. I right, appreciate that. And, and again, as it relates to the hiring, um, I referenced it earlier. Chief Crane's been very active um, in uh, actively sourcing for candidates. Uh, we just need people to come out and uh, qualify candidates to come out and apply. Uh, and uh, we we know that we have an opportunity there. And uh, you know, and, you know, we ha we have to say this, but the, the mayor or the council aren't able to get involved in that because there is a civil service board in place. So uh, so it's uh, it's not. It's not something that's largely in our ability to impact uh, or change. Um, we've we've said a lot about uh, about you know our opinions about the process and and uh, so people we but we have to remind folks how that process works. Okay. Remarks from the mayor and council, uh, mayor. Uh, just want to say we had a really good meeting upstairs. We had the commissioner of the Alabama Labor Department here. Uh, I'm going to be getting in touch with him for a lot of information we can put on Channel 99. It's amazing how many jobs are available. I know Councilman Worthy has been pushing this jobs uh, fair they're going to have and, and people don't realize. And I'm going to branch off of that a little bit and talk about career tech. Uh, that's when We're one of the top states doing that and we started working that about 2006 or 7 and got it in place. Uh, we have some things set up for uh, Yes, and City High School students, we got about a $3 million career tech building. Uh, we got a lot of equipment, work with the different companies on the kind of skills people need. Uh, it's okay to go to college, get a four-year degree, but you can pick up two years of uh, career tech. You can also have dual enrollment. Uh, they tell me at the community college, uh, Director Green did the other day in a meeting that uh, 
there's been a couple of kids that graduated from the junior college and then graduated from high school two weeks later. So there's a lot of opportunities. We also have some, uh, maybe some assistance through the junior college for, uh, you have to have a C average to get in and you maintain that. That would cover books, twos, and tuition, and they need to, you need to check on it. Parents, grandparents, please talk to them about that. I'll tell this joke, which is true. <laughs> I tell it all the time. Uh, the plumber was at the doctor's house doing a job. He got through. He gave the doctor the bill. The doctor said, my goodness, that's more than I make. He said, that's why I quit practicing medicine and start plumbing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of good paying jobs in career tech, and you can always go on and get a four-year degree, too. So you really need to really pay attention to this. It's very important. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Amen. Mr. Eccles? Okay. Councilman Worthen? I'd like to speak to what Mr. Cole was saying. Uh, I've been working with several people in the community to try to help them get their house, houses and homes fixed. But the community development would only do $5,000. If the house costs over $5,000, they won't touch it unless you fix the rest of it first because they want you to continue living in it. But if you're elderly, I think if it's 62 and older, they'll go up to 7500 But we have a lot of older homes, especially in our community. So what I've been, I've talked with the mayor, talked with several of the council people about upping that price to 10000 and then 12500 for the elderly. So we're working on that. It just takes time. But we try to put this information out. And that, that way, uh, the radio station could help us out a lot. We could do ads on the radio station, or we could, you know, go on and talk and let people know what's going on in the community. Because we have a lot of good stuff going on, but people really don't realize it and we don't have a platform to put it out there. So I just want the people to know we are working, we're doing things. Okay, second point, uh, I'm gonna have my community meeting. I'm gonna move it to Saturday, August the 1st, at Carver from 12 to 1 p.m. Matter of fact, the, young lady that asked me to move it to Saturday. I see her sitting out here in the audience and I want to thank her. We're going to move it to Saturday and see if we can attract more people to come to the community meeting. But now when football season starts, I won't be having it on Saturday because <laughs> I have two sons to play college football. So I will be traveling to their games. Okay, enough said about that. Now I'm going to talk about the job fair. And I was so happy that the labor secretary was here this morning. And we're going to have the job fair on August the 5th from 9 to 1 p.m. We're trying to advertise. We got it on TV. We got it on radio stations. So nobody can say they didn't hear about it. So I, I've been announcing this for over a month now. We have over 8,000 jobs within 50 miles of Gaston. So far, we have about 15 companies that will be there at this job fair. We have one that's committed to interview and hire on the spot. So we're going to also have people there to help you do your resume. And I'm also going to talk about if you qualify, they'll pay your way to Gaston State to get a, a two-year degree, a skill, because we have a lot of skilled labor jobs here in, in Gaston. We have over 800 jobs in Gaston. Gaston Region will have over 100 job openings right today, from housekeeping all the way up to doctors. So there's no reason why if you want a job, you, you, you should be able to find a job here in Gaston. So there's no more excuses. We got to get our young people prepared to join the workforce. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Billingsley. Uh, yes. Uh, this past weekend, last Saturday, I went out to the cemetery on South 6th Street and worked out there for about an hour and a half, Miss Bostic. I mean, I'm glad I went to college so that I don't have to work like that. But people have to understand we have to do those type of jobs also. And the majority of the people that came out to help at that cemetery were not from Gaston. Now that's unconscionable for us to ask other people to come do things for us that we don't do for ourselves. And it was very, very hot out there. And I also want to uh, ask the citizens that you can call our offices if you have messages for us at the city clerks and they will get that to us. So if you have things that need to be done in your community, just call us. We'll do what we can. 
Thank you. I'll, I'll piggyback on that. I always tell people that the, the most prudent way to get a message through to a council member is to call the city clerk's office because you, it, you know, they log it and uh, you go on record as having reached out to them. So if they don't follow up, you know, there's, there's evidence there that you did reach out to that council member. So again, I always encourage people. And when, again, I've only been an elected official for five years. So when I was a, 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 just a, a regular ordinary citizen reaching out to elected officials, I went through the city clerk's office simply because I knew that they could hold them accountable and that was the best way to reach them. So I always encourage that. And that's a very good point, Councilman Billings. Councilman Cannon. Thank you, Councilman President Williams. Mr. Coe, I appreciate you coming up here telling us, trying to get the message out about the rehab on the houses in District 6. I think we did 10 or 12 so far in District 6. Myself, actually, in the last three weeks, I've taken two people up community development, get roofs and painting done. But what we run into here lately is a lot of people have their grandkids living with them, younger grandkids, and that throws them off right there of getting any help, you know. So we, that's one stipulation. I don't know if we can work through that or if that's a, it's federal guidelines, we couldn't work through that. But there's a lot of folks that's raising their grandkids now, young grandkids, and that really stops them from getting a program. There's been five or six that, you know, that I know of in District 6 that we couldn't help because of that. But we're continuing to uh, get people to try to paint the houses for people in the city of Guess, you know, furnishing the paint. We did the contract, I think it was, a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, or I think a decorator store got the paint contract on it. So we're ready to go. We just need volunteers for that. Uh, I know if it's over 62, it's $7,500 for a roof now. We also, community development has other programs where that you can, your sewage or something messes up in your house, you might get some help with that. Emergency situations, you know, just have to check with them in community development, see what they got. But I'm glad you brought that to the attention to everybody today so they would know what to do. It's hot weather it is, maybe need their central heat and air fixed or something like that, you know. But we just really need to make sure we try to take care of our citizens and tell them all about the programs we offer. We could do a better job, I agree with you, you know. I, at my district meetings, I try to tell everybody in word of mouth, if I find somebody that needs something, I'll tell them know what to do. A lot of times, like the mayor said, people won't take the initiative to come and do it, you know. Yeah. And that's the old saying is you can lead them, but you can't make them drink, you know. But I appreciate you coming and telling us about this today. Uh, I want to announce that this is for Saturday at the gazebo in Alabama City. We're going to play this week, since it's going to be so hot, we're going to start about 2 o'clock playing CDs and stuff. And the live music will start about 5, and the hot dogs will be there at 5. And Grover Brown with the corn, he'll be there at 5. So. It'll probably go live music, and the bands will be playing from about 5 to 9 this week because due to the weather and the heat situation. That's all I've got. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Cannon. Um, and I'll just, again, you know, he, he hits on a very good point. One, one thing I found out, um, you kind of take it for granted if you're not involved in, uh, in, in, in the public sector activities on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, one of the things that, uh, that I learned even through the initial campaign scenario that one of the most difficult things to try to figure out is how people best get information and and that's a you know that's a that's a fluid answer depending on who you ask if you ask an elderly person they get information best through their church or through word of mouth if you ask a younger person they get information via social media or online um, and so you know, we we have a, a great responsibility, I think, to just try our best. You know, and I don't I don't think it's because of a lack of trying, but we have an opportunity to just try to make sure we're putting information uh, where people can get it. Uh, the Gazden um, the Gazden Times used to be uh, a good um, a good space and a good opportunity for people to get uh, information, but now uh, you know not everybody takes the times. So it's not not something that we can, uh, you know, that that can that can serve as the only way of getting information out. Um, again, uh, my my dear friend and a member of the governor's cabinet, uh, uh, Fitz, Fitzgerald Washington came came up uh, and spoke with us earlier uh, today in pre-council. And uh, in in light of that, you know, the mayor touched on it, and uh, you know, just want to reiterate that one of the things, the couple things that he spoke to were soft skills and 
and, uh, and, the, and the talent gap that we're going to have to fill as a state uh, going forward. So one thing I'll just throw out there, and I, AIDT didn't pay me to do this, but I'll throw it out there because I think it's important. Uh, AIDT, which is not a function of the Department of Labor, but, uh, but they are a function of the Department of Commerce for the state. And uh, they offer what's called a skills at work program that's actually free for anybody that's transitioning. And they teach soft uh, employment skills. They teach uh, interviewing skills, communication skills. They give you tips on submitting an application. But one of the most compelling things is they also introduce you to computers and, and, and help people to understand what it means to use the Microsoft Office package. So there are a lot, and it, it really there's too much for us to try to cover in, a, in, a, in an hour-long meeting, but there's a, there's a lot of uh, resources out there. Uh, people just have to, have to come out of their homes to some level or go online, go into the libraries, go to these career centers. There are people that get paid every day to make sure that this information gets disseminated. And, uh, and, and we try to help as many as Councilman Worthy spoke to earlier. We try to help as many people as we possibly can. I had a young lady stop me upstairs, and in, in 10 minutes, I gave her my elevator speech on where information is as far as, uh, as, far as uh, uh, job assistance and transitional assistance and workforce development assistance. The challenge for us in this state, and I, don't, I shared this uh, when we were at a, a joint event a couple Saturdays ago, and I shared this. Um, right now, in 2025, we don't have, for the year 2025, we don't have the ability at normal birth rates to birth enough talent to meet the needs that we're going to have in 2025. We have, uh, before us, we have a manufacturing crisis where our young people, just like they've kind of turned themselves off to farming, uh, and there's a crisis because uh, you know, children just aren't imp interested in being farmers. There's a crisis now for manufacturing. Young people have seen their parents go leave home fresh and come home tired for so many years until they've kind of turned themselves off to that manufacturing work. So they don't want to do it. And so what a number of states are doing, I'm sorry, what a number of counties are doing is they're starting to target both seventh and eighth graders uh, in preparation for the talent needs that they're going to have in four or five years. Uh, and so you, you'll, see, you'll hear us talk more about some things here that we may try to do locally to start targeting our middle school students to get them some exposure to some of these jobs that they don't know about. And the mayor's been sounding the trumpet for years about career, career tech and uh, what some people used to call vocational tech. And this is, this is why, because there are a number of well-paying jobs out there that uh, our folks are missing because they don't necessarily know about them. <laughs> yes, what, what, happens, what happens is the council member returns the call and then that council member will talk directly with that individual. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll arrange that with that individual directly. Um, the, the only other thing I had is uh, I attended a meeting on last week uh, in Montgomery and uh, again I just want, want people to be familiar with and aware of what's going to be discussed in the, uh, in the upcoming um, special session. Um, of course, you know, everybody knows it's been no secret that the, uh, that the, the state budget is the, is the big topic of discussion um, and, and what's at stake is a number of cuts in services that are going to be passed down to local municipalities. So that's why we're so interested in what's going on. Uh, the cuts are likely going to be in law enforcement, corrections, and, um, and, and Medicaid and mental health. Uh, and, and so with, with that being the case, you know, those are things that are going to get pushed back to our communities and we have to be prepared for and ready to address them. Uh, one of the more interesting things that's come out of all this is that uh, the port Porch Creek Band of Indians has offered, uh, they, basically it's, it's widely held that the number to, to, to meet the void in the, in the budget is $250 million. And so the Porch Creek Brand, Band of Indians, if you've seen some of those commercials and some of the discussion, they've stepped up and said, hey, 
if you allow us to do table games in our casinos, we'll give the state $250 million to fill that void. Um, stay on top of that because I think that's very compelling. Yeah, very, very interesting. It, it is quid pro quo, but, uh, but, uh, but it's very interesting and very interesting. It'll be interesting to see how the, um, how the, how the um, state legislature responds to that. And, uh, and of course, uh, again, some of the things that you should be mindful of also is that they're uh, proposing a 25 cents per pack uh, tobacco tax uh, or cigarette tax and a five cents uh, tax uh, on uh, carbonated drinks. So, uh, and, the, and the goal at some level is to make up the gap. I don't think those two in and of themselves will make the gap up, but they're supposed to generate, you know, several million dollars worth of revenue. So. Again, just informational, stay on top of that, and, um, and, uh, and please, if you have any special interest as it relates to that, reach out to your state legislators. Councilman Worthy, did you have? Oh, I, 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 I don't believe I mentioned where the job fair would be, but it would be at the Senior Activity Center downtown. Uh, like I said, August the 5th from 9 to 1. And I also failed to mention we went to the retirement program for Reverend Huff Saturday and it was a wonderful program and we wish him well during his retirement. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Nichols? You didn't have anything? You went that way. Okay. Already had the opportunity to say no. All right. All right. <laughs> if there's nothing else, I entertain a motion that we adjourn. <laughs>